Quick disclaimer, the script for this vid was written right after Portimao, so anything from the Spanish GP won't be in this vid. Alright, so well, after watching the race weekend at Portimao, everything was normal, and to be honest, it was a boring race. But one thing was off, Daniel Ricciardo. He made a couple mistakes throughout the weekend, which ended up in him having to fight his way through the field just for two points. This confused me as Lando in the same car last weekend got a podium finish on merit alone. But before the video starts, let me just make this clear. I am by no means a Daniel Ricciardo hater. Alright, so now that's out of the way, let's have a look at this. So if you've been living under a rock for the past 10 years, let me tell you who he is. Daniel Ricciardo is an Italian-Australian Formula 1 driver who races under the Australian flag for McLaren. He made his debut back in 2011 at the Silverstone GP with HRT as part of a deal with Red Bull Racing. So let's have a look at his earlier years and his F1 results, yeah? Ricciardo made his track debut at the wheel of a Formula 1 car when he tested for Red Bull Racing at the Young Drivers Test at Haref over 3 days from the 1st to the 3rd of December. On the final day of testing he clocked the fastest time of the test by over a second. Ricciardo represented Red Bull Racing at the end of the season Young Drivers Test at the Yas Marina Circuit in November 2010. Ricardo continued to show his one lap prowess and dominated the event with his fastest lap being 1.3 seconds faster than 2010 world champion Sebastian Vettel's qualifying lap to Saturday just prior. On the 30th of June 2011, Ricardo made his debut at HRT replacing Noreen Karthikeyan for all the remaining races of 2011. Ricardo made his Grand Prix debut at the 2011 British Grand Prix at Silverstone. He scored no points but he was in a pretty bad car. After signing for Toro Rosso, Red Bull's junior team at the time, for two years he lost out to his teammate John Eric Fern, but he beat him in 2013. Overall, after showing some good performances and pace, Red Bull decided to promote him into the Red Bull C for 2014. This is where he shone. He qualified second for the first and his home race at Australia. Having finished second as well, he was on for a podium in his first race until he was later disqualified as his car was ruled to have exceeded the mandated hourly fuel flow rate. But this would set the tone for the rest of the season. In the end, he destroyed his newly crowned four-time world champion teammate, Sebastian Vettel, by almost 50 points. He also got his first win at Hungary at that season. After a couple of really good seasons, placing as high as third in 2016, things turned around in 2018. Although he grabbed some amazing wins, such as in China, where he made some stunning moves to clinch the win, he wasn't happy with his team, especially with reliability on his side of the garage. He had eight DNFs, the most out of all the drivers that season. In comparison, his teammate, the golden boy of Red Bull, Max Verstappen, had half the amount. He felt that Red Bull was massively favouring Max because they did, and most of the problems were coming from the Renault power plant of the back of the car. So what did Daniel do? He moved to Renault. After five retirements, one DSQ and placing a lowly ninth with Renault, he made up his mind to move to a team which he was previously in talk with, where he is now, McLaren. After enduring another season with Renault in 2020 with some sparse podiums sprinkled in, he made the move to McLaren in 2021, which leads up to where we are now. At the time of writing, he has only had three questions, so we can't just say that he's lost it all, as you can't just forget how to drive. But what I want to know is, will we get the same Ricardo that destroyed Seb in 2014, or are, more simply, are his title hopes over? So let's have a look at his season so far. In the first race, he placed 7th in the 2021 season opener in Bahrain, having qualified 6th after a pretty decent race. At the following race in Imola, he finished 6th, having once again qualified in the same position. But this time, he had to let his teammate Lando Norris pass, as he has much more pace. Although this was the right move as Lando went on to score a podium with his pace alone, Daniel said in a post-race interview regarding the team orders that that's where I've certainly got to swallow my pride, the team were fair enough. Now this could point to one of three things, either he's lost a bit of pace, he's still far off getting used to the car, or he's just being a team player. Now personally, I would like to think that the last possibility is true because we all love Danny Rick and he's a great funny person, but maybe this isn't true. Maybe he has lost some pace. Maybe this is the start of a downfall. Well, I'll try not to get too ahead of myself because like I said, there's only three races that have taken place so far. So then we have Portimao. He was looking alright for most of it until Q1 where he was knocked out. And when I was watching all the replays, nothing major really happened as he had a pretty normal lap with just a couple snaps here and there. Now personally, I think there may be three different reasons for this as well. Either he's lost pace, or it was the wind being the car undrivable, or he's still getting used to the car and the team. But personally, I reckon it's just the last two combined. So then in the race, he had a massive task at hand as he was aiming to claw back some points, and that's what he ended up doing. With a great recovery drive, he came back to ninth to score two points. But this didn't come without incident. When he came in for his pit stop, he missed his marks and it cost him significant time in the pits. Now this isn't too worrying as even experienced drivers do this every once in a while. 
and I reckon Daniel is still trying to get used to a break with McLaren. So it's that time again, let's answer the question in the title. Will Daniel Ricciardo ever get a driver's title? Now this might disappoint some of you, but realistically I don't think he will. The only way I see him getting that championship is if McLaren build an absolute wonder of a car next year and Lando's performances go down into the bin. Otherwise, realistically I doubt that McLaren will be a super super dominant force after the rule changes. And all drivers have a shelf life, unless you're Kimi Raikkonen. You will not have the drink. And I reckon that if Daniel's not in a race winning, championship fighting, world destroying car, I reckon that he'll retire in about 4 years. And let me make this clear again, I am by no means a Daniel Ricciardo hater. And I mean, to be honest, who the hell doesn't like this guy? I just believe that a mix of poor career decisions and poor reliability over the years have costed them the ability to fight for the championship. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Uh, I believe this is the quickest I've managed to pump out a video and I've changed up a bit since last time. I would like to give a massive thank you to you guys for watching all the way through and you can find my Twitter below where I announce all my vids early and have aneurysms during GPs. A like would be massively appreciated and subscribe if you want to have more content like this. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.